name is Milton Sosirolamo and I am known for playing Sirio Pharrell in Game of Thrones Season 1 and, um, and I have been working on the new Star Wars Episode 7 film and, uh, and, and, and getting up to mischief in general and that is why I'm here. <laughs> It's kind of funny because I, I, uh, my parents are very traditional Greek people. They're, um, they, from a tiny village in Cyprus, moved to the UK, had a restaurant. Uh, and when I was at school, I grew up in, I grew up in, uh, in, uh, in England. I, I did drama, I did, I did plays. I, I think from the age of nine years old I was doing plays. And, uh, and I never thought twice about it. It was just something I enjoyed doing and it got me through school because I didn't really like school very much. Uh, I think I kind of spent most of my childhood at school just being scared. Oh. You know, not, like not knowing anything, thinking that uh, every time there was a test, I was like, oh God, I don't know anything. And the fear would just grip me. But the one thing I could do and the thing that I excelled at was doing, was just performing. So I was a natural show off. <laughs> and uh, I, I was, even though I was quite shy, it was, like, it was like I had a split personality. Maybe I still have. Like one, most of the time I'm just like really introverted. And then, the other, and then the rest of the time you put me on stage or you put me in costume or you know, literally, it's like I'm a different person. So I feel like sometimes I'm a bit possessed. My, mom, my mother thinks that too. Um, and uh, so I did it. I did it all through school. I then joined an amateur dramatics uh, uh, group. But I never really thought of being an actor as a career because I didn't know any actors. It was so outside my, my experience. It was just something that other people did. Um, but then I went to university, I went, I went to college and I studied performing arts, specializing, majoring in uh, drama. And there, I, we, the group that we were with, we created a little uh, theatre company and we entered student uh, competitions, festivals, and we did really well. We won kind of quite prestigious awards and we were asked to go to Edinburgh. And because of that, even though, even when I was studying drama, I was only thinking, well, at least I should study something that I'm good at, rather than trying to do like chemistry which I'd probably be rubbish at because my math really sucks <laughs> and uh, because of that I just found myself with an agent I found myself joining a theatre company and, and literally I was on this wave of just doing theatre and I wasn't really earning any money uh, but I was doing what I wanted to do and then slowly slowly a lot of theatre, I did opera, I did dance, I did cir even circus stand-up, uh, street performance, whatever it was, I did. I had this kind of curious, curious ability. I've never had a straightforward acting uh, career. Because uh, most actors, you know, they kind of have a kind of trajectory. And I, I was not like that. I was like, ooh, like a magpie. Ooh, I want to try that. Oh, stand-up comedy, I want to try that. I was just trying stuff out. Like <laughs> completely fearless, completely fearless. And, um, and then, you know, as, as, as I kind of continued, I guess my, my, the work that I did kind of narrowed. Not completely, like for example, I've just flown straight from the south of France. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working at, um, uh, an opera festival called uh, uh, well it's just the Aix-en-Provence uh, festival and I was doing a, an opera I was doing Midsummer Night's Dream Benjamin Britten's opera I was playing Puck and that's very acrobatic kind of like a circus yeah. part really uh, and uh, and so I still do crazy jobs like that and then I can go back and do Shakespeare uh, I love doing avant-garde stuff. And then, of course, alongside all of this, 
I've managed to weave in this strange TV and film career, which is only, in a way, it's really only just starting. It's yeah. not, you know, because I did theatre for so long, uh, and uh, I'm really enjoying it, you know. Uh, just recently finished work on uh, Tom Hooper's new film uh, called The Danish Girl with uh, Eddie Redmayne. So uh, that's been, that's really, that's going to be such an interesting film. Uh, and, and obviously there's episode seven, which I've just got a small part in, but it was pretty awesome being in that. And, uh, and uh, the debate continues uh, as to whether you'll ever see Syria for real again. But, you know, that's <laughs> not for me to say. Um, but, but yeah, I, I um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of enjoying being really eclectic and not being tied down and, you know, I've always been like that. I'm a kind of free spirit and I'm a free spirit when it comes to acting too. I'm quite lucky, I'm quite lucky like that because I, I would hate it if I was just an actor who only did one thing because I like learning and I like, I like being given challenges. And I want to. I want to always be challenged and asked to do something. You know, that's why I love doing Syria Pharrell. It was like I know a bit about sword fighting, but I want to learn. I want to. I want to really do it. I want to become Syria Pharrell. So do you think you could take on a professional now with sword fighting? Easily, without a doubt. <laughs> that's like really walking into trouble. I'm now going to be accosted by someone with a sword. <laughs> I'm going to take a step out here and someone's going to oh. challenge me. <laughs> Just say your very famous phrase and then it'll like run scared. Yeah. <laughs> Not today! <laughs> <laughs> Running away. I, I really think that the most important thing is to... Like everyone, every establishment, educational establishment, every uh, institution within work always will ask you, to narrow your options, always, because you're easier to manage that way. Your expectations are easier to manage, your hopes and dreams are easier to manage. I would say easier to crush, <laughs> but that's just because I'm a cynic. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but what I really believe is that uh, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do it when we're children at school. We should do it at the last possible moment. There will always be times when you will have to make choices. But who's to say that you, you know, like when, when they say that expression, um, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. It's bullshit, excuse my language. <laughs> but it is because uh, I believe that uh, you have to follow what you, like, as a performer, I love directing, I love writing, I love performing. Now, usually I don't get a chance to do all three equally because you have to kind of, you have to do something for a little while before people take notice of it. Yeah. Or if you're very lucky, you get given a job and it like blows up and everyone goes, but then you'll just be asked to direct all the time. Let's say if you were directing something that was very successful. They'd really hate it if you did something really successful as a director and went, oh yeah, I'm not going to do anything like that for a while. I'm going to do some acting. They'd like that. Why? We've got a whole lineup of jobs we'd love you to do. You know, that it doesn't... You're not really allowed to do it, but I think if you always can, you should. Because the most important thing is that it fuels your inspiration. Your creativity comes from all different aspects of yourself. So you can be a better performer by being, being a writer, or you can be a better director by being a... a Exactly. A Leave designer, <laughs> whatever it takes, you know, one thing fuels another because when it comes to creativity, you will find your inspiration comes from everywhere. So I, I believe that's what I believe anyway. Be resilient, don't take any shit, and really find a way to have faith in what you do because there'll be plenty of opportunities where you either question yourself or other people's, people will question you. But you, you kind of need that kind of steely core to, to remember that there is a reason why you do it. 
and also to remind yourself what that reason is. You know, don't become an actor to be famous. Don't ever become an actor to earn money. Don't, don't do it any, for any of those reasons. Do it because you're compelled to express yourself in some way. And just express yourself. Someone will notice if you do it enough. And if you do it well enough.